Hi folks, uh, Kartik Kanaksabasin from the Power, Microsoft Power Platform team and I'm responsible for building all the relevant developer solutions that we're going to see today. Casey? Hey everyone, Casey Burke. I'm a principal product manager within Power Apps. I lead app lifecycle, so a lot of the application lifecycle management uh, features we're about to show you today. All right, so let's get into it. So here we are going to be talking about how we do ALM with Power Platform. Yes, I did say that. ALM, Application Lifecycle Management. And so our agenda today is kind of a, a little bit more fast paced and I'll be quizzing uh, Casey with some of his, some ALM experience questions on what citizen developers can actually go do with Power Platform. So in the grand scheme of things, we'll try to help understand exactly what ALM actually means and then try to take it to the next step and try to um, give the perspective of Power Platform uh, in the context of Application Lifecycle Management. And then we will go ahead and showcase a lot of these capabilities and how you can achieve ALM, if you will, from a lot of these different tools that we have to offer today. Uh, so but before we get started, I'm going to do a shameless plug here. First of all, as you guys are watching this, this is already it's February and it is low code February. We have tons and tons and tons of activities that are going on on our GitHub site right now. So if you have the moment or chance to go ahead and to go to aka.ms low code February, I'd be, I'd be very happy to see you guys participate there. Uh, and we'll be sharing all kinds of knowledge and know-how um, with uh, key players from uh, Azure, from uh, Visual Studio, and from the Power Platform team, showcasing all their wares and capabilities that you can use to build wonderful and great applications in your organization. With that said, let's change gears into, into what, why we're here today, Application Lifecycle and Power Platform. So what is ALM? Uh, ALM is obviously short for Application Lifecycle Management, all right? And typically speaking, when we talk about application lifecycle management, unfortunately or fortunately, lion's share of the attention is always taken by the deployment because that is the main event. You know, you take all the effort to go build the application and then you proceed to go deploy that application. And that usually takes, you know, as it, as it should, the spotlight from all the others. But application lifecycle management in particular has seen its name evolve in different, different things and, and is referred to in different ways. Uh, there's obviously DevOps. There's also DevSecOps. Uh, digital transformation is, a, is, a, is another way that application lifecycle management goes by. And then within application lifecycle management, these are the key constituents that are there. All right? You have application governance. It also includes the whole deployment aspect, as I mentioned early on. That's our, that's our diva. All right? And then we have software testing and then maintenance of that application once it's deployed. But it's also about people, process, tools, and the purpose. Uh, one thing to be very clear, Software development lifecycle is also part of application lifecycle management. It looks at the entire lifecycle of the product in that question. Well, what does that mean from a power platform perspective? It comes down to three key things. And, and please, Casey, you let me know if, if, I'm, if I'm veering off on the deep end here, right? <laughs> but if we were to look at power platform in particular, right, it comes down to key three things. It's environment strategy, all right? So exactly how many environments are you going to have, whether it's you know, dev, test, prod, or dev, test, pre-prod, and prod. You ha everyone has a, has a kind of strategy. In addition to that, when we talk about environment strategy, depending on how people want to go develop. So how do you want to create the dev environments with the appropriate configurations and so on and so forth that can then be consistently deployed to various different target environments? Then that, that. The other thing is obviously every resource that you go ahead and build in a Power Platform app has to be packaged into a solution context. All right. So whether it be your flows, your apps, your bots, all these things get packaged that way. And then the third piece from a Power Platform perspective is actually getting the thing to deploy. And then so in this case, what we're going to focus on, a lot of our discussion is going to be focused on how we get this deployed from one environment to the other consistently and repeatedly. All right. But there are some fundamental pieces that we're going to talk about a little bit more here. So Casey, tell them what is, what is a solution? Yeah, so think about a solution as a package. And so it's a container that you put all the different assets in that make up your application. So for example, I might have a Canvas app in there. I might have a model-driven app in there. Uh, the site map, which is the app's navigation, all the tables it uses. And then for the developers, I might even have things in it like custom connectors mm -hmm. or uh, C-sharp plugin code that I'm going to deploy. All right. And are there any kind of consideration one has to look at when we look at deployment in this context? Yeah, so think about there's two types of solutions, really. Um, so within your development environment, 
you're gonna be working in an unmanaged solution. So think about this as an unlocked solution. It's where you're adding your files, you're editing everything. And then when you're ready to go ahead and deploy it to uh, say a downstream environment, you wanna go to your quality assurance environment or to production, uh, we're gonna package that up. We export it as managed. And then that becomes our sealed binary, essentially, that you actually deploy to, to the other environment. So it kind of becomes a kind of immutable unit, if you will. Exactly. You know, yep. that we want to go deploy. So that's, that's one of the key things there, right? Is that you have the ability, typical software development paradigms that we've all grown up in, grown up in and building applications, don't go away because you're using low-code applications. You still have those same set of paradigms, and you also make sure that when you deploy these assets in target environments, they get deployed in an immutable way so that they don't, they're not, you know, Obviously, we don't ever want to go do uh, uh, bug fixing or, de uh, or or maintenance in prod. So we, we want to be able to avoid that as much as we can. Exactly. <laughs> so that said, uh, there's also a school of thought that believes in the fact that, well, when you deploy anything, um, it has to be persisted into source code. Well, they're not wrong. Um, and there are two ways that we support these capabilities, right? One, you can export the unmanaged solution and just persist that into source code. And every time that you take from source code and deploy, to a target environment, you repackage the con you package up the constitution as it is, and then deploy it to the target environment as the case may be. The other school of thought is you not only export the unmanaged solution, but also export the managed solution together and persist them directly into source code. And then from there, as and when appropriate, you take the unmanaged and deploy that into a target environment as it may require. And then instead of having to repackage everything and rebundle it, just pick the uh, managed solution from source code and just deploy that to the target as well. So there are those schools of thought that are there. And who are we to tell people that they're wrong? We have the ability to go do that. And if you want to audit these kind of, if your audit systems require these kind of practices, you're more than welcome to go do so. All right. Some other patterns that we see from a team perspective, obviously, as I mentioned, all right, that we have, uh, you know, you do your regular sprint planning that you have, figure out what the appropriate uh, environment strategy is. And then from there, figure out exactly how, how you, the considerations regarding managed and unmanaged solutions and the, import, and the dependencies uh, that you're importing are always considered to be managed. Because remember, this is just like any other DLL that you're using. So as you're building your app and if you're dependent on other apps, those dependent apps should be managed. All right, because what you don't want is those dependent applications or dependent libraries that you may be using change as you're developing your application as the case may be. All right, now in addition to that, you can go ahead and figure out, you know, when you're dealing with source code repositories, how do you want to, how do you want to persist your, uh, your Power Platform application? All right, is it a single repo, multiple repos? Uh, figure out what the branch strategy that you have. You know, some people want to go ahead and branch in when they go put things in source code repositories, depending on the different environments they go mm -hmm. target. All right, that's a common ask. Uh, you have, you know, specific PR loops that you want to be able to go do that need to be merged by your underlying uh, source control management system and also figure out exactly how you want to work when multiple developers are involved in this context. And one thing, one thing, because we're talking about people, all right, communication is key. So now, once we've done that, we then go ahead and package our capabilities. So in this case, we build the appropriate pipeline so it can be queued in, all right? And then we perform the basic L1 or L0, L1 test as, as it is, package up our solution, run solution checker, and I can't emphasize how important that is. When you're deploying this to your target environment, the assets into your target environment, run the solution checker because it will at least save you a lot of grief before you deploy. Mm. And last but not least, publish the artifact. And that's how you do your, your typical continuous integration capability there. So now that we've gone ahead and laid the groundwork, let's kind of change gears a little bit. So here, we're going to now start talking about Azure DevOps and Power Platform. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, for those folks that are Azure DevOps users, you have nothing to worry about. We use the exact same constructs that you're so used to in building your Azure DevOps pipelines. The only difference is the output that you're using or get, that gets deployed is actually a Power Platform app. Now, let me go ahead and show that to you in a little demo here. All right? All right, changing screens. All right, so here I've got a little app that I'm currently using. And it's a little mixed reality app. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you. And right now, one of the key things is, as part of that environment strategy point that I mentioned early on, as did Casey, you know, I'm sitting in my dev environment here. OK? So I'm now going to go ahead and uh, click on, just go ahead and edit my app here, just to show the fact that this is a full-blown app. It's a mixed mm -hmm. reality app. Uh, 
and I am a, I'm a big aficionado of, you know, of the Smithsonian in particular. So we're going to see some, uh, some artifacts that we can play around with and, and see how that all functions in this context. Um, and then we'll look how this app works. All right, so here's our app. And one of the things you'll notice if I select here on part platform, you can see I've got uh, a couple of SharePoint uh, assets where my pictures are. And then I'm also talking to the Smithsonian 3D API, which is a, a public endpoint that you can go ahead. So a shout out to the Smithsonian folks. Here you go. All right. And if I go ahead and click, let me just go over here. And I'm a big fan of George, Was the George Washington. So if I go click on that, here is the George Washington statue that's at the entry point of the Smithsonian. And I can now look at it in a 3D context. It's a mobile app that I've got rendered. Look at that. See that right there. You know, George Washington's actually surfing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. And now I'm going to go exit out of this. So this is the app that we're now. So we know this app works perfectly fine in our dev environment. OK? So what we're going to go do now is go to Azure DevOps. So here we are in Azure DevOps. And now I've got uh, my pipelines already defined here. So let's look at one. I've got one here that says, uh, par platform get solution. All right, so let's go look at this here. All right, and for those of you who don't know how to get these activities, these are actually par platform build tools. It is available in Azure DevOps Marketplace. Uh, so you can go into Azure DevOps Marketplace, search for par platform build tools, and then install them directly into your org as is. What that does is that you can go ahead and create various different jobs right from here itself. And you can look at par platform, all right? And you see all these different tasks that are now available to you direct, right directly in, uh, in Power Platform. Now, for those of you who are YAML inclined, all right, uh, you can also go ahead and look at the YAML script right here itself. And that's available here as it is. Okay, So you can choose either or. Or you can just go ahead and write the whole thing in YAML and suck it into Azure DevOps Pipeline. Either way works. Okay, So one of the things I do impress upon a lot of folks is when you're using Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions, Please use the service principle. Um, this is uh, a good practice. As a former DevOps engineer, I've got scars to prove it. <laughs> All right. All right. Using username and password, generally speaking, uh, especially when you have multi factor authentication enabled, will break your pipelines. All right. Mm -hmm. So, that just a word of caution there in that context there. All right. So, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm exporting the solution. I go ahead and unpack. Yes, we the export that you have coming out of uh, Power Platform is a zip file. Ideally, please don't use tools like expand archive or things like that to expand it because it's actually, uh, it can mess up the dependencies as such. So ideally speaking, right. use the tools that are available there. I mean, Casey, what do you think? <laughs> no, exactly. And I mean, that's it. Uh, so the solution uh, unpack tool, uh, mm -hmm. solution packager, so you call it, mm -hmm. um, it actually has special handling specifically for power platform solutions. So that's, that's the right way to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Phew, I feel validated. <laughs> All right. So once we have that, we're going to check in everything into a Git system as it is, and voila, everything's going to work. All right. So what I'm just going to quickly go do is I'm just going to go run this pipeline here. This is going to do a Git solution. So I'll say run pipeline. And guess what? Uh, because Par Platform uh, build, build tools in Azure DevOps and the GitHub Actions are built on the uh, Par Platform CLI, it is multi-platform out of the gate. You can run it on Linux. You can run it on Windows. You'll get the same set of results. All right. The only difference is the only pieces where you need Windows are when you're doing things like package deployments or when you're going ahead and also uh, doing data migration. Those depend on .NET 4.8. So for that, you need to be running in your Windows runners. But for everything else, it's pretty much fair game. Windows, Linux, doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and select Run. And again, there we go. It's going to start off, uh, go pick up a pool, uh, uh, pull up a container to run my build. And that's it's going to start off, and it looks like a standard workflow. Again, from a DevOps engineer perspective, this is no different. Okay. Now, while that's going on in the background, I've already gone ahead and done some deployments in, as it is. All right. But just let's, let's look at some of the key uh, elements of the pipeline as it is. All right. So let's go back to our pipeline here, and I've got something called uh, you know uh, get from QA and deploy. All right. So what this is doing in this case is it's actually going to my QA environment exporting the solution as a uh, managed solution for my QA environment, and then running a checker on it, and then importing it into my prod. So let's look at that over here. Again, it looks like a very simple workflow, but there's doing a lot of complex operations as we speak. All right, so here in this case, I'm exporting it as a managed solution. So as you can see, I've selected that option here. 
I've gone ahead and run my solution checker, and I'm this time running the solution checker against my prod environment, okay, with my prod credentials, all right? So that's the other thing too. And then I proceed to go ahead and import into my target environment. So that's Azure DevOps for you. So as a developer, you're now able to, or a DevOps engineer, you don't actually have to do anything extraneous. You are doing what you're currently doing, except now the tasks you use are relevant to a Power Platform, and it just works. So now let's talk about GitHub and Power Platform, all right? So the same set of principles that I just showed you when, when it came to Azure DevOps also apply with GitHub. We do not want GitHub users to actually have to understand different concepts when going ahead and building applications that are targeting Power Platform. In this case, you still have events, you still have workflows, you still have jobs, and you have steps. The end result is the byproduct in this case is a Power Platform application that you now deploy to your various different target environments. Let's take a closer look at exactly how this looks like in the GitHub world. All right, so I'm going to go back and switch over to in my GitHub environment here, as you can see. Uh, and I've got my source code here, and I've got, and this time around, instead of going ahead and getting the solution, I already have the solution available locally here. All right? Now, one thing to note in GitHub, unlike what you saw in Azure DevOps with the classic editor where you have uh, a more intuitive UI, within GitHub, everything is written based on YAML. All right? So here is the same thing I have there. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, steps here where I'm defining all the different variables right within my YAML, uh, a set of environment variables. And as again, as you can see, I'm still using service principle here as an authentication mechanism for uh, my service. And again, over here, I'm going ahead and making sure that I'm, I've authenticated properly to the backend system, um, exporting the solution into a target environment, unpacking it, and then running a bunch of Git commands to go check it in into my Git repo in, on GitHub. Now, simultaneously, Unlike what, what I had in Azure DevOps, I've got one pipeline that does packaging everything else, putting it into QA, getting the managed solution out, and immediately taking that and putting that into my prod environment here. And the same principles apply, all right? So I have two jobs. One job is saying convert to manage, all right? And I've got it listed over there, same thing. Packaging my solution from source, running the solution checker, all right? Importing it into my target environment, all right? and Presto, voila, I'm ready. It's now ready to uh, be staged. So it's now being put into the staging area as a managed solution, which can then be picked up from the artifact store within GitHub. Now, what the artifact store in GitHub is, it's a temporary area in the runner as a file system where we can just go fetch things. You don't have to check it in or do anything of that sort. It just stays there. It's a file system object. So I'm now just going to go pick it up and then import it. Now, what I have gone ahead and done is, in my actions view, when I go kick these things off, I already have this thing running here. Or oh, I actually ran it. It took me a while because it was a pretty uh, hefty solution that I was deploying. All right. But as you can see, it looks the same way. All right. And this was running on a Windows runner on GitHub. All right. In the Azure DevOps world, we were running it on Ubuntu. So in this case, same principles apply here. But again, as you can see, these are all the different elements where in which you can actually do the deployment in a much more seam uh, in a seamless fashion when it comes to Power Platform. Now, obviously, uh, it is not for the faint of heart. You know, especially if you come from the citizen world. And that's mm. something that has actually kind of pained us a lot. Uh, wouldn't you say so, Casey? I mean, <laughs> you know, how do citizen developers actually, are, are they, how are they able to value that? It can be a little thing? overwhelming, for sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, what I'm now going to go do is I'm going to pass it over to Casey to kind of talk to some of the other capabilities that we're building on Par Platform when it comes to citizen developers. So if you haven't heard yet, we recently announced pipelines within Power Platform. So um, think about this as in-product ALM capabilities. And so we'll jump over here. And, and a lot of the problems that we we're trying to address with this, so uh, Kartik just showed you the, the amazing uh, build tasks that we have set up within Azure DevOps <laughs> yeah, you'll and GitHub. <laughs> and, um, no, but it is massively powerful, though. And what Kartik showed you was just the, the tip of the iceberg, really. Um, but, but really, it can be a lot, right? And we can't send citizen developers there. And on the other side of the spectrum, we've had a very basic uh, experience you know, to manually export and import solutions, which um, works pretty well for a lot of scenarios, especially just infrequent you know, export, import. Um, but really, as you kind of step things up and you want to put more governance and rigor around that, and really you want to scale it out to some of your larger uh, scale projects, um, you're going to want to put some automation behind it. And so really, we're trying to bridge those two gaps so that everyone can work together then the same deployment experience and in the future it'll actually work with the existing stuff that you have already running in Azure DevOps and, and GitHub and, and make it a lot simpler even. And so 
this is broken out into three different experiences for different personas. So I'm going to start with a demo here in a couple minutes, but we're going to start with an admin type persona. And so it just takes a couple minutes, actually, to go ahead and build out a, a fully working pipeline. Uh, that I, can, handles... I can speak from experience, all right? <laughs> Setting up a pipeline in Azure DevOps takes time, all right? So that's kind of cool. <laughs> And, and, and the configuration is just very minimal, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, everything else is just handled in the product already, like your connections, your environment variables. You don't have to worry about configuring anything else um, mm -hmm. to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to switch personas to the citizen developer. And so right within the Power Apps or the Power Automate portal, working in your solution, you can just click a couple buttons and it carries out an automated deployment you to the are, You're a man after my heart, because that's usually all the biggest thing that pains me, is like, how do I articulate to citizen developers what the heck a pipeline means in the first place? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so it, it can be kind of educational like that, mm -hmm. too, and just kind of outline the steps they're supposed to go through for a standard SDLC type process, right? right? Um, but we also can't forget about the pro developers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so, um, fairly basic what you see in the in the preview, but mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to be extending this out. And I should say, your team will be extending this out, Kartik. But, Thank you. <laughs> um, but there's a lot more coming and in, in, in the works. And so, mm -hmm. actually, a lot of what Kartik showed as far as within the different um, build pipelines within Azure DevOps, for example, all the different tasks that you have to to orchestrate within that. We've abstracted that out, and so we've made it more outcome focused, and so you don't have to worry about all those inner workings, exporting the solution, unpacking it, all those mechanics. It's just I want to deploy my solution. And Wait so a minute, we a put a low code inter inter interface on top of DevOps, now that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> on a command line. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, just to go over kind of the basics really quick of how mm -hmm. this works, and so. Um, we have a host environment that is going to store all your configuration and run history for, for the pipelines, as well as your artifacts. Within this, we define a pipeline. And so a pipeline is going to have multiple different uh, dev environments linked with it, and it will be accessible directly within any of those environments. Then you create all the different stages. So this is your, your test stage so that's going to deploy to the test environment or your production stage, for example. And then the artifacts or your solutions is really what you're going to be pushing mm -hmm. through the, the pipeline for the deployment. And what's coming very soon, we're uh, working on it right now, is the ability to extend these stages. And so think about wiring up a Power Automate Cloudflow, and then you can run your own custom logic, and it's incredibly powerful. All the different connectors we have interacting with, with Azure DevOps or GitHub mm -hmm. if you need to, or any other type of processes that you want to run. But you can, you know, as a professional developer, you can also write C-sharp plugins mm -hmm. um, to do some of your deeper integrations to run things uh, like synchronous logic, whereas Power Automate would be uh, just async only. Maybe, maybe you want to also clarify the fact that this is not supposed for, this is not supposed to be a replacement for Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions, correct? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so, um, really, you know, we we aim to do about 80% or solve about 80% of use cases in product, but that 20% can be a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're not quite there yet for sure, but um, you know, in, in the fullness of time, I should say. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, I'm, I'm now excited. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to the demo now. So now you can see I'm in my development environment working on the solution. Mm -hmm. And you can see that pipeline that was just built show up here. And of course, if I had access to multiple pipelines, you'd be able to select those and run them nice. as well. And so now it's just a couple clicks, really, to carry out an automated deployment. Mm -hmm. There's a couple things that we need to check first. First, we're going to start valid, uh, pre-validating the solution against the target environment, which is really cool. We've never been able to, done the, uh, to do this in the past. So if there's missing dependencies in your solution, if you're violating DLP policies, mm -hmm. those types of things, we're going to check and make sure that the appropriate guardrails are in place nice. and detect things before your pipeline fails during the import, which is much too late. Um, so now you can see, after the validation passed, then it's going to go ahead and automatically sign me into my connections in the target environment. So for anything that's Azure Active Directory based, then it just uses a single sign. I'm just salivating just watching this. So this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a green check mark there too. <laughs> makes, makes you feel better. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> Gives you the warm and fuzzies. <laughs> and if your solution does have environment variables too, you can go ahead and enter them here just like you would on the manual solution import. Right. And so we're going to enter QA for this one. We'll go ahead and select the SharePoint site and list. I'm going to connect to a different site and list uh, in my app in the QA environment. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going to specify different uh, values for those parameters. And I can change the solution version here if I want to from right. them about to deploy. And then from there, you just click deploy. And it's going to go ahead and carry out the full end-to-end -end deployment. So think about all those underlying tasks that you know a DevOps pipeline was showing earlier, as far as exporting the solution, mm -hmm. um, you know, downloading it somewhere, and then importing it to the target environment. Right. Only difference is this one is not um, unpacking it into source control, right. obviously. So, so, so that's that's the piece that's kind of missing. It's all exactly. ev everything is now just self-contained within the Power Platform environment, so it doesn't have to actually go exactly. out, outside the environment like it does with a source code repository. Yeah. All right, got it. So while this is going on. I'm, I'm assuming, just like the way versioning happens, let's say in source code repository, there's a versioning mechanism here that kind of gives you an idea of all the different prior runs that have actually happened and the different versions that have gotten deployed, and that's all contained within the system itself? Exactly. So that host that I was showing at the beginning mm -hmm. um, actually is going to store all the different versions of your solutions, mm -hmm. um, as well as a full log of who deployed the solution, who the owner of the solution is, uh, the target environment that it went to, mm -hmm. and um, a, a ton of other details that you might want to see about it. So instead of me talking about it, why don't I just jump over oh, and show Please do. <laughs> so we're going to go back into the app where I configured the pipeline. Mm -hmm. and you can come down here and see all the different run history. And granted, this is a new demo environment, so there's not too much data in there already. Right. But you can go ahead and see that deployment I just submitted. It looks oh, like it right. actually just uh, succeeded as we're talking. Beautiful. Um, and what's really cool is you can actually visualize this in, in Power BI. So it kind of gives you a holistic view of all the different deployment activity across mm -hmm. your organization. Nice. So you could set this up either for a project, mm -hmm. or you could even set it up across your entire tenant if you wanted to and use this as the uh, control plane for all deployment activity in your tenant. Bar chart, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great. This is awesome, Casey. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump back. Mm -hmm. And now you can see that that completed. Mm -hmm. And that run history as well, you, has, you also can see that directly within the maker portal. And so say there was a failure or something happened, um, you can come down here and see it. And you'd see the full air log and be able to, to troubleshoot it. Nice. So now you can see that successfully deployed to QA. And mm -hmm. I could go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for production. Mm -hmm. What's really cool about that, too, is if I started the production deployment, it's going to use the exact same artifact that was deployed to test. So even if I'm mucking with it in my development environment at the same time, making you know working on the next iteration, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. It's going to use the previous deployed one to test that same artifact. And it's because consistent. <laughs> yeah, because we stored it in, in the host, which is really nice to prevent any uh, intermediate changes that might bypass your, your QA environment. Nice, nice. So, well, there you have it. Um, so within Power Platform, you can now uh, deploy Power Platform applications using Azure DevOps, GitHub, and within the product itself, the capability to go deploy using pipelines from uh, pipelines for Power Platform. Uh, one last thing that we'd like to go ahead and share so we also have a professional developer experience, right? Mm -hmm. And our goal was to simplify the lives of professional developers as well. And mm -hmm. we have a ways to go still. But mm -hmm. think about it is we've made things outcome focused versus having to worry about all the different tasks that you would have to orchestrate to mm -hmm. actually uh, you know, do a deployment. And so all the different export tasks, um, connecting to different environments, and then downloading the file, connecting to a new environment, importing the file. Instead, you just connect once to the host, and you can run from the command line. You can just specify the solution that you want to deploy and the stage you want to deploy and the version. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just carries out the, the entire deployment um, on your behalf. So you don't have to worry about the, the actual tasks. So I'll just put a word out to my pro dev community there. I'll download the latest version of the Power Platform CLI, and all the fun, fun things that Casey just did on the UI can now be done directly through the Power Platform CLI. And as Casey mentioned, pipelines are now in preview. And before we, before we sign off, here are a couple of resources that uh, we'd like to point you to uh, that are available on the website today. So we have things like our getting started, so when you want to get started with some low-code application development, hands-on lab for all the things that we demonstrated here, uh, along with documentation how to get going with Power Platform pipelines. Uh, and as again, uh, it would, I, I, and I'm going to repeat myself here again, but we have low code February, so please participate. It's a very simple URL, aka.ms forward excited. slash, <laughs> please do, uh, uh, forward slash low code dash February. Thank you all, and hope to, hope to catch you soon on the other side. Thank you all very much. It's been fun. <laughs>